Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm your host, John Townsend, and today we'll be experimenting with a fancy drink of the 18th century, but in a very frontier setting. It's called Cherry Bounce. Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Cherry Bounce in this setting uh, is a made wine. Shows up a lot in the 18th century cookbooks uh, for Great Britain and undoubtedly uh, in North America. Wine is an expensive item in the 18th century, imported from France many times, and they had substitutes for wine. They would make wine with raisins and with other sorts of fruits. In this circumstance, it's a wine sort of drink made with cherries and cherries are something that is very, very available, especially here in North America. We're going to be using sour cherries. So cherry bounce was popular and it was popular with George Washington. He wrote about taking it along as provisions on one of his trips in 1784. And we find a recipe for it in Martha Washington's papers. Now it's not written out in Martha Washington's hand, so maybe it's a recipe that someone gave to her. Let me read to you this recipe. It's an excellent cherry bounce is what it's called. Extract the juice of 20 pounds of well-ripened Morella cherries. Those are sour cherries. Add to this 10 quarts of old French brandy. Sweeten it with white sugar to your taste. To five gallons of this mixture, add one ounce of spice, such as cinnamon, cloves, nutmegs, of each and an equal quantity slightly bruised, and a pint and a half of cherry kernels that have been gently broken in the mortar. After this, this liquor, this whole infusion, has fermented, let it stand close stopped up for a month to six weeks, and then bottle it. Remember to put a lump of loaf sugar in each bottle. Now, this is a very fancy drink. We're not really in a fancy setting. We're on the frontier and maybe we'll have to use some different materials as we put together an, uh, a drink like this. Now, uh, for an example, she calls for old French brandy. Well, we don't have access to old French brandy, but even here in Indiana, apple brandy was a very popular drink to make. Um, and sell. It's one of those sort of farmstead um, produces that, that are being made. Uh, there are other things that might be used instead, um, rum or different sorts of, you know, whiskeys that in this time period. So that's going to be a perfect substitute. We might not have the perfect loaf sugar uh, that she talks about, which is a very white sugar. We might have to use something like maple sugar, uh, but we can still make an amazing drink. We're gonna take our sour cherries, and these need to be fresh cherries, not preserved cherries or just cherry juice. We're gonna put these in a bag and mash them up and squeeze out all the juices. We wanna get as much as we possibly can out of this. Even out of the original recipe, the 20 pounds, it might not make as much cherry juice as you want. So you're gonna need a lot of cherries. Once we get all the juice extracted, you'll wanna take a cup or two out of the mix and that's where we're going to add our spices to. A cinnamon stick, a couple of cloves, a little bit of nutmeg. It's going to go onto the fire for a low simmer, a low fire to infuse those spices. Once they're up to heat for five or 10 minutes, let's take them off and let it cool back down. After our smaller mixture has cooled off, we can add that back into our main batch. After that, we can add in our sugar mixture. Now this is sort of sugar to taste. We are gonna add about a cup or a cup and a half of sugar to the amount that we've got here. Now it's time for our brandy. I've already put these into our fermenting vessels. We've got a couple of canning uh, jars here of the time period. And to the mixture that we've got out of our cherries, I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of brandy. Now, her original mixture was the juice of 20 pounds of sour cherries to one quart of brandy. Uh, you know, that's, that's a kind of a hard to know mixture. It depends on exactly how much juice you get out of your cherries. So you're gonna to have to guess a little bit here. We had about 64 ounces of cherry juice when we got done. So we're gonna add about a cup and a half of brandy to our mixture. 
Now we did not um, cook this whole mixture of cherry juice on purpose uh, because this she calls for it to ferment and the only place where the yeast is going to come from uh, in this batch of uh, juice is from the cherries themselves. If we would have boiled it, we would have killed the yeast. And that means you that's the reason why we're using fresh cherries. If we would use preserved cherries or cherry juice that's been pasteurized and there's no live yeast in there, we want to have that uh, live active yeast working from the cherries themselves to ferment this batch. We've got the, the canning jar here. We're not going to seal this it should ferment a little bit and it should produce carbon dioxide. So we're going to cover these jars uh, with a cloth so that they can breathe a little bit. This is uh, open vat fermentation. So uh, we're going to try to keep the bad things out. And the brandy should also uh, help the right yeast work and not the wrong kind of fermentation. So here is our batch. It has aged. It's fermented and aged about eight weeks or so. And, you know, in her recipe, they would have gone ahead and drawn this off and then put a little sugar and bottled it. We're just going to, and that would have caused a, a fermentation, uh, secondary fermentation that would carbonate the bottles. Uh, in our circumstance, we're just gonna try it like it is. Uh, we don't have any bottles or anything like that, especially in a frontier setting like this. So we're gonna try it just like this. Let's find out. Um, wow. Um, so this is a very, very interesting complex flavor. It's definitely cherry, but it's like a cherry cordial, but it's not, it's not quite as sweet as you might think it is. It's really, really good. And I'm wondering how different batches are going to work out. I can really see how, you know, one year's cherries or one, you know, from one cherry tree to the next, you might get some super interesting flavors, but I mean, I can definitely see how uh, if you had a canteen full of this, like George Washington, uh, you'd want to come back to this like during the whole trip because it's really good. Wow. This has been an incredible experiment. In fact, I want to keep trying with this. I think there's more things to do with this drink. So we'll be, who knows, I might revisit this one. I want to thank you for coming along as we try these things out. It's just so fun to experiment with these historical drinks. And if you're interested in more kind of a summertime drink right from the time period, check out this Switchel episode.